Hi everyone, it's Aaron here from Pi Supply, and I'm here to do the virtual LoRaWAN Wall of Fame. I didn't unfortunately have enough space in my house for a massive wall to attach all this stuff to, but I have got a bunch of products, as you can see on the table here in front of me, um, and I'm effectively just going to do a show and tell, give you a bit of info about what we do and the products that we've got, and then a load more info I'll put in the links below the video. So if you wanna find out more about specific products, find out more technical information um, that doesn't fit into this 15 minute segment, then you can just, you can find those um, later on. So let's get started. So this product here is the first product we made for LoRa, um, which is the LoRa Gateway Hat. So hats are basically add-ons for Raspberry Pis, um, stands for hardware attached on top. Um, I think it was a backronym, they just liked the idea of a hat, so they called it that and then made it um, hardware attached on top. But yeah, so th this converts your Raspberry Pi into a full eight channel gateway. So this is the 868 megahertz version, so for Europe and um, UK. Um, so yeah, basically this is the hat. As you can see, it's got the 40 pin header there. So it's compatible with any 40 pin Raspberry Pi. So that's the zeros, uh, zero W, and then anything from B plus onwards, including the A plus, 3B, 2B, 4B, all of those with 40 pin header. Um, so this uses a RAC 833 um, MPCIE low run module. Now on the newer versions, we use a RAC 2247, but it's, it's essentially the same thing, eight channel gateway using the uh, Semtech SX1301 um, LoRa chip on there. So yeah, that you, you saw me just plug it back in there. That just literally slots in and then clips into place like that. So it's super easy to use. Um, you've got a header here, which you can add a GPS for location data. Um, and other than that, it's just plug and play. It's got an EEPROM on there for auto config with the Raspberry Pi hat spec. Um, and yeah, you plug it in and we've got a really neat piece of software, um, which is like the gateway management software, kind of like a router backend, you know, like a wireless router uh, backend, just enables you to configure everything to do with the gateway, get it set up and sending to the things network um, or wherever else you want to send data to. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's just a case of downloading the software image um, and you can be up and running in minutes with uh, a, a full featured eight channel Raspberry Pi gateway. So that's, um, that retails for 130 pounds, um, which is about 145 ish euro um, or 150 ish dollars. So yeah, it's a, it's a really nice product. And with all of these products, the whole idea behind them when we were developing them was to reduce the barriers to entry of LoRa. So reduce the cost and reduce the time for market or time to you know get it all set up basically. So that that's really what we've tried to do with the software and the hardware is make it so that you can just buy it, plug it on, and it's as cheap and easy to set up as, pos as we can possibly make it. Um, so yeah, that's the gateway hat. I'll put that to one side. And then next up, we've got another Raspberry Pi product, which is the LoRa Node Fat, as you can see there. So this is called a Fat. So hardware attached on top. It's the P stands for Pico. It's basically just a smaller version of a Raspberry Pi hat, but still conforms to the same spec and, and uses the same header. So that's the board there. So you can see it uses a RAC 811 LoRa chip there, a system on a module really. Um, and yeah, it's got the 40 pin header. So this header you can see is super low profile. If you pair that with a Raspberry Pi Zero, and this is the same outline as a Raspberry Pi Zero, 65 by 30 millimeters, so quite small. You can then just plug this on top of the Pi Zero's header um, and I think it will sit about four millimeters away. So it'll be a super, super small low raw node um, with that together. Um, we've also got in the bag, in the box, sorry, um, a bunch of accessories and um, mounting hardware and stickers and everything like that. But you'll see we've got this header. 
So basically with the full size Raspberry Pis, there are components in the way that would stop you from mounting this on, on top of it. So what you have to do is put this stacking header on, slots in to the header there. And then that just makes it, gives it a little bit of a higher profile, which just enables you to plug it on top of the Pi 3, Pi 4, Pi 2, one of those bigger Raspberry Pis that isn't a zero. Now, it still is only about 10 millimeters away from the Pi, so it's not exactly um, a, a massive difference, but you know, just not quite as low profile as, as with the Pi Zero. So let's take that out again. You can see it's quite stiff to get out, which is good because it means that when it's connected, it gets a really good connection. So you can also see on here, we've got a header. That's an I squared C header. So you can connect, that basically just connects through to the Raspberry Pi's I squared C interface. Um, if you want to, you can, um, we have a I squared C GPS that you'll be able to connect in there uh, for position data, or you can just connect any I squared C um, sensor or device um, and, uh, and, and use that breakout header instead of the Raspberry Pi's 40 pin GPIO. So just a neat little um, add on there really. Now you'll see we've included this, which is an external antenna. Um, on the board, we actually have an internal antenna, as you can see at the bottom there. But obviously, the range is not as good as an external antenna. So we provide with it this RPSMA antenna and an adapter to convert it to a UFL IPEX connection. So that screws in there and then this just pops onto there and you've got an external antenna. Now you'll also see on the board, you've got um, the thing saying X and int. So what that is, is um, you need to move an inductor between those pads to change it from the internal to the external antenna. So when you receive this, it will be configured to use the internal antenna. And if you want to use an external antenna, you just move the inductor from the int pad to the X pad and that, that, um, that changes it to use the external antenna. So that's the LoRa node fat. As I said, we'll put loads of information in the links below the, below the video in case you have any questions or anything like that. Um, I'll just pack this all away quickly and then we'll move on to the next product. Next up, we have the LoRa node shield, which is for Arduino. So this is very similar to the Raspberry Pi hat that I just showed, the Raspberry Pi node fat that I just showed you. Um, the only difference being that it comes with um, a header for the, Ras for the Arduino. So this is compatible with Arduino Mega, Arduino Nano, and Arduino Uno. Um, so I'll just get this out of the box. So you can see it's got the header for the Uno on the bottom, um, and you can stack other shields on top. And then you can see there, it's got the header for the Arduino Nano as well, if you want to use that instead for a smaller platform. So yeah, very similar, it uses the Rack 811, has the internal and external antenna capability. Um, so very similar to the Raspberry Pi board I just showed you, um, just configured to use for Arduino instead. Um, still comes with all the mounting hardware, bunch of stickers as well. So feel free to stick those on, on your laptop or iPad or something like that. <laughs> so last, but by no means least, in the LoRa range that we've got is the Microbit LoRa node. So some of you might not have heard of uh, Microbit before. Um, if you haven't, it was a small single board computer platform developed by the BBC here in the UK. And it was developed to help kids get into coding and physical computing and just learning about electronics, things like that. So I think when they originally launched them, they sent out a million free to schools um, and then since then, it's just similar to a Raspberry Pi. It's a super cheap and easy to get up and running with single board computer platform for learning. However, being a cheap computer, it also has a load of other use cases and people are using it for all sorts of different things. So we thought, you know, a great platform to get LoRa onto, not just to get kids using it and, and people learning LoRa, reduce the barriers to entry, as I said earlier, 
but also as a super easy and cheap dev platform. So that if you want to create a proof of concept product for based around low raw um, radio, then you can use the micro bit and it, it's super quick to get up and running. So the, let me just grab everything out here. Again, very similar to the low run node shield I just showed you for Arduino and the low run node fat. Um, it uses the rack 811 system on a module there. And again, has a I squared C header for connecting other sensors, uh, like a GPS, like our GPS um, and the external and internal antenna as well. So that's the board. I'll grab a micro bit out here. So this is a micro bit go kit. Basically what that means is it comes with the battery pack. So you can see the micro bit here, super small, little single wall computer there. And then that's all the components and stuff on the back. Uh, and then in here, under this little flap, we've got a battery pack, a USB cable, which we don't need now, and some AAA batteries. So you plug them in, pop that into that connector there, and you can be running this off batteries using LoRa. So this would then, this um, at the bottom here, this lovely little connector, is actually um, what they call an edge connector. So that itself is the interface to the board. So you just slot that into our edge connector there. And that is a low run node using the BBC micro bit. Now, the micro bit can be programmed using Microsoft Make Code, which is like a Blockly style, uh, like Scratch, if you've ever heard of Scratch, um, drag and drop block based coding interface. Um, but you can also program it in MicroPython and a few other languages as well. So it's super easy to get up and running. If you, if you want to use the block-based one, we've got a library for the LoRa um, board for the block-based language, Microsoft Make Code. Um, again, I'll stick all the info in the links and stuff, but it just enables you to get up and running super easily. And you can do that all in the browser. You can drag and drop, get it all up and running in the browser, including accessing the sensors on the board. Um, and you can, you can then literally drag and drop a hex file in your file system onto the micro bit and it programs it up in literally seconds. So a super easy one to use there. So again, as I've said probably too many times now, the whole concept between behind all of these products is just getting up and running as quickly as you possibly can with low RA um, and, and getting a proof of concept. Uh, that, that's been our idea behind this the whole time. So the nodes, they sell for 30 pounds, so about 35 euro, uh, $37 maybe. Um, so all of them are that price. And again, it's just got a wealth of documentation, technical info, um, code, and all sorts of different examples and getting started guides we've got available for you so that you can get up and running super quickly. So next up, we've got a bunch of accessories for our Lora products, which I wanted to show you. They don't um, directly, any of them do LoRa, but they're just boards um, and cases that you can use with our LoRa products to add value basically and to add functionality and make them more useful. Um, so let me just move all these to one side. So to start with, you can see we've got the Nebra IP67 outdoor case. Now, Nebra Limited, for those of you who don't know, is our parent company of Pi Supply. Pi Supply is the maker and hobbyist brand that sits underneath it. And then more recently, sort of industrial and more generic products we've been putting under the Nebra brand, um, effectively as a sort of more grown up brand um, instead of Pi Supply, which is more hobbyist and uh, maker uh, space. So just to give you an idea of why there's two separate brands. So this is um, one of our first products under the Nebra brand, which is, as it says, um, an outdoor waterproof IP67 rated case. So let me just get it out of the box here. So that's the case. Now you can see it's got quite a lot of inputs and outputs. Um, so I think it's got um, five N-type holes, four M10 and an M20. So if I just undo this here, it also comes with a bunch of mounting hardware. 
So this enables you to mount it on a pole. Um, it comes with these gaskets and seals, uh, which I'll just put to one side for a second. And then you can see inside it's got this mounting plate, which you can drill or use to mount certain things onto uh, sensors or whatever else you want to put in there. So in itself, a really good outdoor waterproof case um, and you can use it for literally any project. Now, the neat thing is, is that we have this board here, which we call the IP67 Gateway Hat Mounting Board. Now, I'll just show you quickly because I'm running out of time, but if we take this board out of its bag, this board sits really nicely in this case. So with the mounting hardware, you can attach that in there and there's Raspberry Pi headers. So you can plug in a Raspberry Pi, you can plug in the gateway hat and you can, you can get up and running with a gateway, an outdoor gateway for, again, super cheap and super quickly. That, that's the kind of idea behind all of our products. It, you, you'll start to think we're, there's a bit of a theme here. So yeah, that's the IP67 board. You can have um, the Raspberry Pi and three hats um, so you can put the gateway hat on there and then you can have other hats as well just to add functionality, add sensors, add um, any extra functionality that you want to add. So on that note, um, we've got the Pi Juice Zero and the Pi PoE switch. These can be paired with that gateway mounting board to enable uh, battery power and UPS backup. Um, and with the PoE switch hat, you can enable power over ethernet power for the whole setup as well. So for somewhere in the region of about 200 pounds, you'd be able to set up a battery backed PoE powered gateway hat based around the Raspberry Pi, all in this IP67 case. And you've got a really nice outdoor gateway system ready to go. So that's those. And then last but not least, we've got the ethernet pass through cable. And again, this can be paired with the PoE hat and it can mount onto the bottom of this board, screws into place and, sorry, that way around. And you've got ethernet pass through for your case. So that's that one. And then again, we've got the N-type bulkhead adapter cable there. That can work with the IPEX connector, the UFL IPEX connector on the gateway hat for the external antenna. And again, using it with one of these um, bulkhead holes, you can just pop that through and you can have an external glass fiber antenna or something like that on the outside of the case. So that's all from me. Um, I'll wrap things up, but thanks very much for watching. As I said, I'll put all info and links uh, and documentation into the video description. And yeah, if you've got any questions, feel free to email us. It's sales at pi-supply.com and we'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching.